Hey guys, what is up? My name is Dave and welcome to my first Iron Man Tips and Tricks video. A lot of people have been asking me questions on how to do things and I've been getting a lot of repeat questions and I've been getting a lot of people just suggesting that I do some type of series like this where I just give you guys tips and tricks on random things in the game and, you know, try and compile all of these similar ones into one video and hope that it helps you guys. So, the first one that I'm going to be doing is construction. So recently, I actually just finished 99 construction on my Iron Man. I've had it banked for a little while, I just never really got around to finishing it. But I'm going to show you guys how to start construction, how to carry on training construction in ways that benefit your account in multiple ways in addition to just the hard grind for this skill. Now if you're a low to mid level Iron Man, you might be wondering, well why bother, what's the point in training construction, it's expensive, it's not worth my time. You can actually get to levels that are pretty useful without getting all the way up there that shouldn't be very expensive for you at all. And the reason you want to do it is because a POH since the update a couple years back is actually one of the most powerful tools in the game, especially as an Iron Man. It'll save you a lot of runes, it'll save you a lot of time, especially for things like clue scrolls when you're doing your medium clue scroll grind for your rangers. I know that my POH saved me a shitload of time in that circumstance. Reason being is, you get access to a lot of things even from low levels like 50 and lower, such as portal rooms, which can take you to all these variable places in game, it's very helpful to have those. And then from higher levels you can gain access to things like a fairy ring in your POH, uh, the jewelry box, the altar that lets you change your prayer book, which is also very helpful, and the most important thing, the rejuvenation pools. So the way I plan on structuring this video is I'm going to show you guys how to train your construction to particular levels, where to gather the supplies for training your construction, and then I'll show you what to build in your POH, as well as how to make some money for low-level, mid-level, and high-level players. So to start off training your construction, when you first make your account, before you go to Winter Todd, something you want to do is buy a house, first of all, at any estate agent, doesn't matter where, Falador is probably the easiest, Remington uh, will be your default location, uh, and then you go over here to a Baron Assault and you pick up some planks. Now, why do you do this first? It is actually pretty important. Hey, free genie. It is actually pretty important that you make sure you get your construction level to around 10 before you start doing Winter Todd, because you will get a decent amount of construction XP if you start doing Winter Todd early on as an Iron Man. So you might as well make sure you're utilizing that XP as much as you can. So pick up some planks until you get 10 construction. Shouldn't take you very long at all. Then you head over to the lumber yard because for regular planks, you do actually need nails. But you can just head over to the sawmill operator, buy them here, Apparently they're out of stock on this world, but they won't be out of stock in every world. It doesn't really matter what type of nails you buy. And then head over to your house, get 10 construction, and then do Winter Todd for a while. Alternatively, if you don't plan on doing Winter Todd for your early construction, you're going to have to pick up a lot more planks or chop a bunch of these trees around here and take them to the sawmill operator since you won't be able to do the POH method yet. And once you do that, you're going to have to just use those planks until you get 19 construction and you can move on to oak. So let's go ahead and move on to oak and show you guys a couple of the places where you can obtain oak planks the easiest. Now the place where I got most of my early game construction done was actually right here. I just chopped down these oak trees over and over and over again until I had several thousand oak logs, because you will need a decent amount of logs. And then I just chucked them in the bank, rinse, repeat. Now I didn't make them into planks immediately, but there are alternative methods like I'm about to show you where you can just make them into planks right when you're doing it. Now one thing I want you guys to know how to do, and it's very important that I show you guys how to do this, before we carry on into the video, because this is going to be very relevant for all of the future methods, is how to actually make your planks. Now, as you can see, I'm in a PvP world. Be very careful when you're doing this. Don't be an idiot like me and wear your fashion scape here, because you could misclick and die, and that would be really shitty. Don't take your entire cash deck with you, because you could misclick and die, and that'd be very shitty. Uh, in order to do this method, you're going to want to have 50 construction, which... You can do this without 50 construction, but you want 50 for the demon butler, it helps a lot more. So, as you can see, PvP world. Camelot has a bank on a PvP world, which is very helpful because this is going to allow you to make planks very, very quickly. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to teleport to your POH. Once in your POH, you bring a bunch of logs with you and your coins. That's the only things you really need to have, as well as law runes. So, once you are in your POH, you call your butler. Once your butler comes over to you, you can just use the planks on him. Once you've done this once, it'll actually just have the, the message, and you can just left-click him, and it'll be fine. Tell him to take the planks to the sawmill. It'll tell you how much it'll cost. With mahogany, it's obviously going to be very expensive, which I'll talk about later in the video. Then once you send him there, all you have to do is go back to Camelot. You can teleport back if you'd like, but I just have my Camelot portal right here. It's very convenient. When you teleport, you will never be in a PvP zone. You might be very close like I just was, but you'll never actually be inside the PvP zone, so don't worry about that. Just be very careful with misclicking, especially because there is a leave house option here that's right above the call servant option. People do camp outside POH portals, so you have to be very careful doing that. Once you're back here, you just grab another inventory of logs, 
you teleport back to your house, rinse, repeat as fast as you can possibly do it, and you can make upwards of 6,000 planks per hour doing this. So it's very, very helpful. You should all know how to do that. But now, let's go back and first of all, get off this PvP world, and then we'll go back and continue showing you guys the alternative methods. Alright, so the next thing requires that you have your POH portal in Remington. This does work at lower levels as well, but like I said, the higher construction you have, the better butler you have, which makes this method a lot easier. 50 is the highest for the demon butler. But right here, you can see that there's some oak trees right outside of the POH portal at Remington. So all you're going to be doing is the same thing you were doing in Camelot, just chopping these trees down into logs. But instead of banking them, you're just going to go right into your POH here, and then call your butler, send, the, send them to the sawmill to go make them into planks, and then come back out and keep chopping. Now, the reason that this method works so well, and I don't know if I mentioned this in the last clip, is because when you're not in your POH, when your butler is doing that task, the planks just go directly into your bank. So that's why it's able to make so many planks per hour. But this is an alternative way. It's a bit more of a chill way of doing construction. It lets you knock out the planks and the gathering of materials for the planks at the same time. All right, so getting into the next couple of methods, these are all very variable. You can pick whichever one you want to do. Uh, we're going to start off here on Fossil Island. So on Fossil Island, there's actually three spots where you can plant hardwood trees. So hardwood trees are either teak or mahogany. If you are an Ironman who is looking to get your construction up faster and you maybe don't have the money, I would recommend using teaks instead of mahoganies for all of these future methods because it will save you a lot of GP. In terms of GP efficiency, it's the best thing to do. However, if you're like me and you're a PVMer and you're going to have a plethora of GP, don't worry about it. Go for mahogany. It's a bit faster XP. It's not that big of a deal. You will be spending probably two or three times the money doing mahogany, but you know, for me, I personally thought it was worth it. So on Fossil Island, there is a spot where you can plant three hardwood trees. Now, since I'm here, I might as well check the health of these. Um, once you have them planted, you can see they offer a lot of farming XP, so it's definitely worth it to get these planted in the first place. But all you're doing here is you're going to be chopping a full inventory of logs. You climb through this hole right here, and guess what? The bank is pretty much right over here. So you can just chop a full inventory, come over here, and then bank them and rinse repeat over and over and over again. It works out fantastically, and that's kind of a more chill method, similar to the first method of getting oak logs that I showed you guys earlier here's one of the alternative methods for gathering your teak and mahogany planks. So as you can see, I just switched the RK spellbook, and there's a teleport on here that is the Apatol teleport. Now, as you can see, it requires 90 magic, so this is kind of a limiting method for a lot of Iron Men because I know a lot of Iron Men do not have 90 magic, but if you have it and the other method doesn't really appeal to you or you maybe don't have the hardwood seeds, which by the way, you could very easily obtain by doing some mole or just having your kingdom on regular trees for a while and opening the bird's nest from that. They aren't very rare, but with 90 magic, you can actually teleport straight to Apatol. You bring an axe with you and right up the ladder here is actually a spot that a lot of you guys are probably familiar with who might even see a person here because people are always here. Actually, no, it's empty. Uh, there are teak trees right here. So you just teleport to Apatol, chop down some teak trees, Teleport to your POH and call your butler, make them into planks, rinse, repeat, teleport back over and over again. Now, the only downside about this method, in addition to requiring 90 magic, is that it also requires house tabs, because obviously you have to be on the Arceus book to do this, and, or you, I mean, alternatively, you could make a patrol teleports, but that would take you a shitload of time as well. You're going to need house tabs to teleport back to your POH every single time. Now, house tabs are kind of a limited resource, in my opinion. Even though you get a lot of soft clay from neck reels, I personally didn't find this worth it because as a PVMer, I would rather save my house tabs for other bosses. Alternatively, if you don't want to chop these teaks, you can actually just run north over here and there is a mahogany tree that you can chop down if you would rather be going for mahogany logs. So like I said, if you're doing this method, teaks is going to be a bit better because obviously you can see the run for the mahogany tree is a bit longer as well. But there's a mahogany tree over here. If you'd rather chop this down, that works as well. Now, if you're like me, or you've watched any of my videos, you're probably wondering, Dave, I've never seen you do any of that stuff. Uh, I've seen you do tons of PVM, and that's it. And that's actually right. I've never done any of these grindy methods for leveling up my construction. I actually just did it all passively through PVM. So the main way I got a lot of my planks is actually through Kingdom. So I'm going to get up to 100% really quick and then lay some statistics down for you guys on what's actually better to have on Kingdom for you, depending on your GP situation. I've actually been here extremely recently, so... My, uh, my rewards is, are going to look very, very barren, but that's fine. I'll show you guys anyway. So, if you look at the rewards here, you can actually see that I got myself 664 mahogany logs. Now, it's very important to note that I have mine on mahogany for a reason. So, if you look over here, first of all, you want to make sure that you have hardwood on full. 
because it does help a lot. You could have herbs on full, harbor on half, depending on your situation. Personally, I got a lot of herbs passively once again through PVM, so I didn't have to worry about that very much. I would recommend having harbor on full and herbs on half. So, what I did is I actually put on mahogany. The reason for that, even though I mentioned earlier that mahogany is much more expensive, is because if you have it on 100% and you're at 100% favor every day, the maximum amount of logs you can get is either 301 teak logs or 204 mahogany logs. Now for this one, I'm actually going to be showing you guys something that is going to be relevant for the rest of these methods that I'm talking about. So for teak planks, you will generally be getting 90 XP per teak plank, and you will generally be getting 140 XP per mahogany plank. However, with the release of Dragon Slayer 2 and the completion, you unlock the ability to purchase a Mythic Cape. Now, a Mythic Cape is actually a very, very important item for this method of construction, and you, like I said, have to have Dragon Slayer 2 completed to do this. But as you can see, in the skills of my POH, there's actually an option to mount a Mythical Cape. So, it's kind of weird to say this, because this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, but for some reason with this method, you can see it only requires three teak planks and a mythical cape, which you do actually get back when you remove the item, so don't worry, you don't have to buy like a million mythic capes to do this. You actually get 370 XP for making this particular item in the POH for some reason, which makes your teak planks actually give you 123.33 repeating XP instead of the standard 90. Now that being said, it's kind of making you wonder, well, why would I ever do mahogany planks over teaks? Well, mahogany is still way faster because since this only uses three planks at a time, it's very slow. The maximum amount of XP you can be getting doing this is, I believe, around 400k, whereas making mahogany tables, you can actually get close to 1 mil XP per hour if you're tick perfect. But in terms of conservation of planks and whatnot, it's actually very important that you know about this. This is going to be where you should be using the majority of your teak planks, assuming you have Dragon Slayer 2 completed. If you're a hardcore Iron Man, sorry, you're going to have to stick with the standard of probably making benches or tables. So now is probably a good a time as any to show you guys this right here. So on the bottom half of your screen, you can actually see something that looks like a spreadsheet. Now this is a spreadsheet. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to this in the description down below, so make sure you guys click it. If you want to use this, you can just copy it to your own drive. Um, what it does is basically you can plug in the amount of planks you have, it'll add them up, it'll tell you the amount of construction XP that you'll get from using them all collectively, the uh, cost it'll be if you want to, like, if you have, like, you know, let's say 100 logs or 110 oak logs. Alright, so we go over to the side here after we plug that in, and oh, look, it tells us it's going to cost 27.5k and it's going to give us 6.6k XP. So, kind of important to have this. I think it's very helpful. I just whipped it up one morning because I thought it'd be a useful thing. So you can just copy this to your own drive if you want to use it. If we just plug in the amount of teak logs and mahogany logs that we can be getting daily from Kingdom, as you guys can see right here, uh, important to note is the cost to make, like I said right here, 150k is for the teak, and then 306k is going to be for the mahogany on the daily. It is quite expensive for mahogany, but like I said, it's much more XP per hour, in my opinion, still worth it. But the daily XP you're going to be getting is slightly different, if you see right here. The daily XP you're going to be getting from Teak is 27k, whereas the daily XP you're going to be getting from Mahogany is 28.5. Now that's not a whole lot, it's only 1.5k at the cost of an extra 150k GP. Might not seem worth it, but keep in mind, the less planks you have to make, the less time you're going to be spending teleporting to your POH making those planks all the time. However, if you look one more row over, I do also have the calculations for the Teak planks with the Mythical Cape method, and you can see just how much more XP you're getting from doing this method. Like I said, I still didn't prefer it, but it comes down to personal preference at that point. If you enjoy the Mythic Cape method or you're trying to save GP, feel free to use this. It's not bad. Um, this is where your Teak planks should be going, but like I said, eh, not really my thing. Try it out for yourself. See if you like it. So, like I said, I do get a lot of my stuff passively. Now, the ways I get it are actually through a lot of variable methods. Now, since I'm running a completionist type series, I've actually killed a lot of fossil island wyverns. Fossil island wyverns actually drop a decent amount of teak logs. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this instead of just chopping them yourself, but hey, if you want to kill fossil island wyverns anyway, or you're looking for another reason to kill them in addition to the Renar seed drop, 35 noted teak logs can actually be pretty good. On top of that, cave horrors also do drop a small amount of teak logs here and there, but the main ways that you're going to be getting them passively is through Zora, which drops a decent amount of mahogany logs. You can also get some through Callisto, if you ever camp Callisto, and the biggest one is, of course, Raids. Raids drops a lot of teak planks and a lot of mahogany planks, which is going to give you a shitload of XP over time. Now, something that I mentioned I would talk about at this point is actually how to make the money for this. Now, like I said before, a lot of it will come passively through bosses like Zora and Vork that I just showed, in addition to getting those 
other drops, you're going to be getting a lot of alkables, especially at Vork. However, the main one is Slayer. So I actually alked my tabs somewhat recently, but as you can see in here, you get tons of alkables. You get, this is from Vork, the, the Dragon Plagues and Dragon Plate Skirts. You get a lot of random alkables from Slayer and just various boss tasks here and there, and that should provide you more than enough money to adequately be able to support yourself while doing this. But alternatively, there are some methods that you can do, like you could, instead of doing Slayer, you could go out and do the crafting method where you buy battle staves and then make them into air battle staves and then alk them and rinse repeat because that will yield you a profit. Also, you could get some crafting XP while doing that. So if you're looking to change your crafting XP and you hate charters, by the way, that will be a future tips and tricks video for Iron Man crafting, you could actually do the old method of making air battle staffs. Now, that's not for everybody. Personally, I have a shitload of battle staffs sitting in my bank here that I just haven't touched because I don't really want to do it and I don't really need the money since I get most of mine passively. Uh, alternatively, you can get a lot of things like use, make sure you're using your ore, make sure you're making all of that into plate bodies and whatnot and alking that. There's a lot of methods for making money that people don't generally consider. Before I show you guys anything else, I think it's very important to note that there are some ways of making the actual training of construction a lot easier. So if you change your screen from fixed to resizable, you can actually try to mess with zooming in and out to make sure that when you right click, my screen region is going to look a little weird on the recording here, I apologize. But you want to make sure that you have your screen set so that when you right click on something like here, for example, you have the build option right where you click. It's usually in line with the bottom part of your your chat box or right above the report button and all that stuff. If you right click, as you can see, I'm already on the build option. So I could just right click build, then when I'm ready to destroy it, right click, left click again to remove, rinse, repeat over and over again, and you don't have to move your mouse as much except for when you're talking to your butler. Now this is doable for all of the methods I'm going to show you. However, for some, it does require you to use third-party clients in order to zoom in past the zoom cap, which is something that the regular client has offered and it has passed a poll, but for some reason it hasn't come into the game yet. I'm not sure why. I know they have a lot of other stuff they're working on, but that's not the point. I'm going to show you guys a quick example of this before I move on. Obviously, like I said, the screen region is still going to be a little weird for the recording, but I have a bunch of leftover mahogany planks, so I'm going to show you guys real quick. So I am actually going to be making mahogany tables right here, and as you can see, I have it set so that I can right-click, left-click right here, hit the hotkey for mahogany table, right-click, left-click again, remove, build, talk to my butler in the middle of this, send him to the house, just build, remove over and over again without actually having to move my mouse very much. This makes construction a lot easier, it moves a lot more smoothly, and I don't know, I personally found construction rather enjoyable while doing this. It allowed me to not hate the skill as much. So I would recommend doing this with everything that you are making in your POH. It just makes the entire situation a hell of a lot easier. Side note, but still very worth mentioning. Uh, I actually have a, a gaming mouse. It does actually help a little bit because I can relax a lot more by just hitting the buttons on the side of my gaming mouse. Just saying. Um, here's one more important thing that I didn't mention earlier. The servant's money bag. It is very, very, very important that you build this because you can store up to 3 million coins in this. And what it actually does is whenever your servant comes to ask you for a payment, you know, for the demon butler, it's 10k. Whenever the servant comes to ask you for a payment for, you know, doing whatever it is they do, It'll just take it directly out of the money bag, and you will entirely skip the dialogue option, which helps you train your construction a hell of a lot faster with a hell of a lot fewer mouse clicks. So strongly recommend building this as soon as you can possibly build it. And of course, before I wrap up this video, I'm going to make sure to mention to you guys the best things to build with all of your planks. So, for oak planks, it's best to build oak larders. Oak larders require 33 construction, and they are in the kitchen of a POH. Uh, as you can see, the reason they're the best is because they use the most planks. What you're generally trying to do is find the things that use the most planks, because the way construction XP works is, it doesn't matter what you build, it matters the amount of planks that go into it. So oak ladders require 8 planks. Very, very decent there. Um, you want to use that at the beginning until you can actually make oak dungeon doors, which I will show you guys right now. This does require you to have a dungeon in your POH, and this does obviously require higher construction, so you can't do this right off the bat. But once you have the level for it, you can actually make oak dungeon doors, which are honestly a little bit awkward to make, but because they require so many planks, but 10 planks for oak dungeon doors, but it does require 74 construction to do so. All right, so the next method that I'm going to show you guys is the mythical cape method. I showed you guys this earlier. I may or may not have misspoke when I said this, uh, but this is actually in the quest hall of a POH. I already showed you guys about this one, but it's on the guild trophy space. Uh, it only requires 47 construction, so you can actually do this one from a pretty low construction level, although I'm not sure if Dragon Slayer 2 actually has a construction requirement on it. It probably doesn't, but 
47 construction to make this. This is where most of your teak planks should be going. If you do not have Dragon Slayer 2 completed, then there are some alternative methods. Now, the alternative for teaks is going to be obviously less XP per plank, like I mentioned earlier. The alternative for teaks is teak benches, which is located in the superior garden of a POH. This one actually does require 66 construction, but it's kind of nice, I guess, to be able to mention that you can actually have two, because there's two spaces to build here. So that's something worth mentioning, I guess. Um, however, I personally found these really awkward to make, so I didn't enjoy doing them. You can also do this with mahogany logs as an alternative to tables if you're very fast. Sometimes it does require freehanding if you're trying to get more XP per hour than you're going to be getting at mahogany tables, which is the last thing I'm going to show you guys for mahogany. Now, last but not least, you can actually make mahogany tables in the table hotspot of a dining room in your POH. These use six planks per, so I found them to be very favorable. Like I said, you can make those benches, and if you're good at freehanding or you just become more comfortable with it, you can actually get more XP doing those because you can get two at a time. It's a little bit faster. There's less downtime in between, but I had no trouble with mahogany tables whatsoever. I personally thoroughly enjoyed them. So this is what I did, and I was getting upwards of 900k to sometimes pretty close to 1 mil XP per hour while doing these. Whew. All right, that was a lot more to cover than I thought it would be. So if you feel like I missed anything, feel free to leave a comment down below, or if you have alternative methods that you think are viable for Iron Man, feel free to mention them down below. Also, if you have any other suggestions of a tips and tricks video that you'd like to see for anything on Iron Man, feel free to go ahead and, and leave it down below, whether it be for a boss or getting gear or staying motivated, honestly anything. I don't mind, even if it's just a ramble type video. I personally don't mind making videos like that. But if you guys enjoy this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Check out all the links in the description. Uh, join my CC, which actually isn't my Iron Man CC, it's my main's name, which is just Dave. Uh, would recommend joining it. A lot of friendly people in there, very active social CC. My Discord is also public if you'd like to join that. And don't forget to check out the construction calculator in the description as well as my live stream link because I do stream every single day. So. Peace out, have a fantastic day everybody, and I'll see you guys later.